Uh, we've just arrived at the Valentin U-boat uh, pen stroke bunker. Um, so just waiting till you to see the size of this thing. It's absolutely ginormous. And this um, bunker stroke pen was built purely to build the Type 21 submarine uh, which they used near the end of the war uh, to well effect really. I think they've, they've had it at the beginning of the war, the middle of the war, may have made a di big difference. But uh, we'll go and see a, a Type 21 later on anyway. So well, let's have a look at uh, this massive bunker, shall we? And we can see the size of it with um, Sharon sort of giving it some kind of perspective on the size compared to a human being, Sharon's about five and a half foot to five foot six, something like that, which is five and a half foot anyway. Um, so that's the idea of the size of the thing. Okay, this section here, the open section here, would have been sloop skates, which would have been obviously round here, straight into the, uh, the river. Um, and that's where they've sailed the U-boats out. Now you can see how deep it is because that tanker there is travelling along the estuary. So you know it's going to be quite, pretty deep with that thing travelling along it. We're uh, now inside the bunker, stroke pen, and instantly the temperature drops. Uh, it's quite cool in here actually because it's very warm outside. But in here, it's really, really, I bet it's only about 10 degrees. Outside's about 18 to 20 degrees. But, uh, you can see the vastness of it, it's huge. For well, some reason they would add near it first place. Well, see that all there? That is where one of the Allied bombs had, uh, had come through, probably at least 10 metres, uh, 10 to 15 foot of concrete. Now, I'm not sure if they were a grand slam, grand slam, I should say, or tall boys, I'm not sure. I'd have to have a leap, but uh, that's the first eyes of all that to do all that damage. Direct it as well. And this is the part that they've not restored yet. Yeah, it's absolutely huge. We well, saw the first bomb that hit the, uh, the roof of this building, and the, the other bomb is over there, which is about, well, there's actually three, four, apparently only two hit it, but that's what it says. See them looking through the light there. So this is the back of the uh, of the, uh, the building where they would have um, let the submarines float out through the sluice gates at the back. Obviously there's none there now because it's an earth mound towards the uh, estuary. Uh, and this is where they'd have floated out and right at the very bottom there where the uh, railing is, that's where the, that's where the sluice gates would have been. The Valentin Submarine Factory is a protective shelter on the Vaza River at the Bremen suburb of Reckham, built to assemble the German Type 21 U-boats during World War II. The factory was under construction from 1943 to March 1945 using forced labour, but was damaged by air raids and unfinished by the end of the war. The Valentin Factory was the largest fortified U-boat facility in Germany and was second only to those built at Brest in France. As a manufacturing facility, it differed from conventional U-boat pens, which were designed to house and service operational U-boats. 
Under the codename Valentin, a submarine assembly plant was to be built directly on the Vaza River between Bremen suburbs Reckham and Farge. It was intended that the facility would be used for the final assembly of Type 21 submarines. Starting in April 1945 with three U-boats and from August 1945 a monthly delivery of a minimum of 14 U-boats. A second bunker called Valentin II was planned as well. The bunker is around 420 metres, which is 1,390 feet long, and 97 metres, which is 318 feet wide, at its widest point. The walls are 4.5 metres or 15 foot thick. The height of the structure is between 22.5 and 27 metres, which is 74 to 89 feet. The roof was constructed using dozens of large reinforced concrete arches, manufactured on site and individually lifted into place. Most of the roof is around 4.5 metres, which is 15 foot thick, but part of it is, is 7 metres, which is 23 feet thick, as the Germans began adding to its thickness before the bunker was even completed. Construction required 650,000 cubic yards which is 500,000 cubic metres of concrete and steel rebar. By March 1945 the facility was 90% completed and most of the necessary machine tools had been installed. Production of U-boats was due to begin within two months. After completion the bunker would have had a workforce of around 4,500 slave workers. Each U-boat would be built from eight large prefabricated sections manufactured in other surrounding shipyards and bunkers and then shipped to Valentin on barges. The bunker was to house 13 assembly bays called Taktplatz in German or Takt for short. Each carrying out one part of the assembly process. Two bays, Takt 9 and Takt 10, were underneath box-like structures on the roof that allowed the extra height needed for the installation of periscopes, snorkels and antennas. The two last bays, TACT 12 TACT 13, were separated by high walls from the rest of the building and could be closed by watertight floodgates. TACT 13, which was the final bay, was a dry dock with an 8 metre or 26 foot deep pool of water. TACT 13 was to be used for leak tests on the completed U-boats, as well as engine starts and other tests. In addition to the 13 assembly bays, the bunker housed workshops, storerooms for the prefabricated sections, diesel engines and batteries, and storage tanks for fuel and lubricants. The gateway in the western wall could be closed by means of a sliding bomb-proof door, which opened to a small canal, and then directly onto the river visor. Through this, sections of a submarine could be delivered by barges and completed submarines could leave. Operations of Valentin were intended to commence by late 1944 but was postponed to mid-1945 due to, in part, a combination of manpower and supply shortages and bombing. It is likely that production would have been limited due to the severe quality control problems experienced with the prefabricated sections. Albert Speer, the right armament minister of the Tour organisation, had directed that the sections be made by inland companies and then assembled at the shipyards, so to as ease production. However, these companies had little experience in shipbuilding, resulting in lengthy rebuilding to rectify flaws in the sections. Of the 118 U-boats completed, only four were rated fit for combat before the war ended in Europe. On the 26th of March 1945, the Valentin factory was attacked by the RAF. The attacking force consisted of 20 Avril Lancaster heavy bombers of 617 Squadron, also known as the Dambusters. Dropping 5-ton tall boys, 13 10-ton Grand Slam bombs. Two Grand Slam bombs hit the target and penetrated about halfway through the 15-foot or 4.6-metre thick ferrous concrete roof before exploding. The explosions blew large holes in the remaining thickness of the roof and brought down about a thousand tons of debris into the chamber below. Workers who were inside the bunker at that time survived, as the bombs did not penetrate the roof before detonating. 
Three days later, on the 30th of March, the 8th Army Air Force attacked Valentin with Disney bombs. These were large 4,500 pound or 2,040 kilogram weapons with hard steel casings. Rocket assisted to increase their penetrating power. 60 were launched, but only one hit the target, causing little damage. However, considerable damage was done to the installations surrounding the bunker. The factory was abandoned and four weeks after the bombing, the area was occupied by the British Army, which captured Bremen after a five day battle. After the war, when the already installed machine tools had been removed, further bombing of Valentin was carried out. Beginning March 1946, Project Ruby was a joint Anglo-American affair to investigate the use of penetrating bombs against heavily protected concrete targets. Because it seemed impossible to destroy Valentin by bombing it, the decision was made to destroy it by blasting. This idea was later abandoned because the blasting would have caused severe damage to the nearby villages of Reckham and Farge, including the power station in Farge. In 1960, the bunker was taken over by the German Navy for use as a storage depot. High maintenance costs forced the German Defence Ministry to offer the bunker for sale in 2008. Military use finally came to an end on the 31st of December 2010. With the intention of developing it into a museum and a memorial. Its custodianship was passed to a group called Dencork Bunker Valentin. The group currently offers guided tours of the bunker to the public. However, you can enter the bunker and have a loot round for free. Most of the 10,000 to 12,000 people who built Valentin were slave workers who lived in several camps located between 3 and 8 kilometres, which is 1.9 to 5 miles from the bunker. Amongst the labourers were mainly non-German concentration camp inmates, as well as Russian, Polish, French prisoners of war, but also some German criminals and political prisoners. Work in the bunker took place around the clock, with slaves forced to work 12-hour shifts from 7am to 7pm. This resulted in a high death rate amongst the prisoners. However, the identity of only 553 victims, mostly Frenchmen, have been confirmed. The total number of deaths may be as high as 6,000, as the names of the Polish and Russian dead were not recorded. The 1983 memorial, Vernich Tung Dutch Arbeit, Extermination Through Labour, commemorating the deaths and suffering of those slaves who built Valentin. I thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next video.